I don't think there's a one size fits all set of rules on how to run a mystery RPG session, although there definitely are some tried and true pillars. I wanted in this video to zero in on a specific concept that you can use in mystery games, one that is embraced to some degree in Free League's Vassen. If you're not familiar, Vassen is a gothic 19th century supernatural Swedish investigation RPG built on simple rules. In the case of Vassen, each session is meant to act as its own open and shut investigation, although your characters can gain skill points and talents as well as upgrades to their HQ over the course of several or many investigations. It's really the perfect game for learning how to run mysteries generally, and obviously you can reskin the game to take place in any setting as long as the PCs are largely non-magical and kind of out of their depth in the course of discovering mythical or folkloric creatures. In the session that I dissect in this video, I chose to use the vanilla Vassen setting, which is 1800 Sweden. I wanted to walk you through how I planned a session of this game, including the dark secrets that turned out to be incredibly useful and interesting, as well as what tools I actually used to run the game, how my session turned out, and what I would change in order to make it run better. But first, let's take a look at our sponsor for this video, Ember Forge. This video is brought to you by Ember Forge, the makers of exquisite 3D printed metal dice that are finished by professional jewelers. They sell their previous dice sets on their Etsy shop, but have two new sets launching on Kickstarter. The Atlantean set, which evokes a sort of Magitech treasure recovered from a long sunken city, and the Yggdrasil set, drawing upon the imagery of the world tree in Norse legends. These and all their dice are hollow in design so that they aren't unwieldy like most metal dice, but constructed of bronze so that they're extremely durable. It's hard to put into words just how these dice feel in the hand and how they roll. They sort of sing when rolled together, and there's just something extremely satisfying about their heft and construction. Emberforge dice are for gamers who are ready to go to the next level with their game. You might start your collection with some inexpensive dice that do the job, then graduate to something a little nicer. Then you might get metal curious and mess around with some solid metal dice. Once you've been through all that and you're ready to show up with some heirloom quality polyhedrals, this is where you go. I'll never let mine go. Pledge to get your Atlantean and Idrisil sets on Kickstarter now. Links are below. All right, back to the video. So at the time of this recording, there have been four Vassen books published. The Core Rulebook, which sets you up in Sweden somewhere in the 19th century and based out of the growing city of Uppsala. This book includes a sample mystery called The Dance of Dreams. The next book that came out for the game was A Wicked Secret, which is a collection of four mysteries, each running about 25 pages. The book after that is Seasons of Mystery, which contains another four mysteries. The fourth book is Mythic Britain and Ireland, which provides a lot of useful springboard information for setting your game of Vassen in 19th century Britain, Ireland, Scotland, and Wales. And it includes 14 new mythical Vassen and three more mysteries. In order for me to share my experience with you in this video, I will have to spoil one of these many mysteries. In this case, I used the first one from A Wicked Secret, a mystery called Silver of the Sea, written by Free League co-founder and Year Zero engine creator, Thomas Harenstam himself. The first obvious thing that you have to do when planning a mystery is determine what happened. Really, the whole five W's, one H. Who did the bad thing, where, what they did, why they did it, when, and how. In the case of Silver of the Sea, you're given the whole crime at the beginning, as well as all the key NPCs. But the most important thing here is not actually provided in the book. It comes from your players. The beating heart of a good Vassen experience comes from the GM weaving in these things found at the top of every player's character sheet. Each character's motivation, trauma, and dark secret are things the GM at least needs to keep in mind throughout the session. I'm such a fan of dark secrets that I had the players in my game come up with what I called super dark secrets, which they only shared with me, so that not only would they have the satisfaction of seeing elements of their own PCs past and their psyches show up in the mystery, they would experience surprise and maybe even betrayal by other players. Players keeping secrets from other players creates a layer of mystery on top of the shared mystery, and that has the potential to engender more player buy-in and hopefully more thrills along the way. But you have to be artful when you work all of this stuff into the shared mystery. In the case of Silver of the Sea, let me just give you the overall story. Again, big time spoilers here. 
In a small impoverished fishing archipelago in rural coastal Sweden, a poor family called the Admonsons one day catch a sea child and raise it as their own. After a time, this family, which has slowly turned to murdering shipwrecked sailors here and there for whatever treasures they can get their hands on, starts sacrificing humans to an evil mermaid, who in turn blesses the islands with herring. The Admonsons grow very wealthy over the course of years as that sea child grows up to be the leader of the family and a herring baron. Eventually, a vicar from the nearby city comes sniffing around wanting to deliver the heathen sailors and fishermen of this small island economy from evil and show them the ways of Christian deliverance and redemption and all that. Long story short, the Admonsons murder the vicar in a botched mermaid sacrifice attempt and end up killing one of their own in the process. A priest who studied under this vicar contacts the PCs who are members of the Society, a paranormal investigation order, to come to the island and investigate. When the PCs show up, they poke around in four different locations gathering clues, and then they reach a final confrontation with the Admonson family, the mermaid, and most spectacularly, a giant kraken. There are plenty of locations, challenges, and clues for the PCs to sift through, but again, it's the PC's own dark secrets that I'm most interested in. In the case of my session, one player played a clergyman. That character's motivation, understanding God's creation, was something to keep in mind, and the trauma of having a spurtus, or cursed little embodiment of the devil he could never get rid of, was also interesting. But I kind of just wanted the player in this case to drive those things himself, and I would feed the fiction with his initiative at any chance I could get. But the secret that the devil speaks to him was something I could use. I could have the devil give him clues anytime the party got stuck, but eventually it might be shown that he listens to the devil, and that could be a potentially big reveal. And as far as my little homebrew rule of the PC having a so-called super dark secret, his was that he's the illegitimate son of the Archbishop of the Church of Sweden. This would come into play by having the PC receive special treatment throughout the mystery, to the point that it's conspicuous and he would need to lie to other PCs. The other PC, a 19-year-old hunter, had the motivation of seeing the sight, that is, the ability to see Vassen, as punishment from God, and he wants to atone. This is why he pals around with the clergyman PC. His trauma is that he took a man's life defending someone, and his secret is that he felt a thrill when killing that man. In this case, I would want to give the player extra bonuses here and there anytime his character chose to be violent, and shield the character from mental conditions born of violence. The character's super dark secret was that he laid with a female-looking Vassin once, and that creature continues to send him love letters. The way I'd work that into the mystery would be that the character receives shady love letters even when in the middle of the investigation, and he has to hide the letters, or at least the source of the letters, as best he can from his party companion, the clergyman. Not to make things necessarily player versus player here, but to try and ratchet up the tension, I planned to have the clergyman PC receive a letter of his own, instructing him to ferret out anyone who has ever had carnal knowledge of a vassin, and make sure that the other PC knows that this is a top church initiative. And as far as the hunter's secret admirer, I would plan to have her reveal her horrible self in the final confrontation of the session if they can't get out alive. I would use her as a deus ex machina that saves the party's lives, but also blows the big secret of the one night stand that they had in a final dramatic crescendo. That was the plan, at least. One technique that I stand by with running virtually any kind of RPG is to get a lot of the background stuff sorted out in casual online chat before the actual session. A session zero, or a whole session dedicated to setting up gameplay, can be fun, but it shouldn't be warranted for a game that operates as a one-shot. So in the case of one-shots, just have a group chat with players a few days or a week ahead of time about the little background details and privately message them about their super dark secrets if you're using stuff like that. This saves a ton of time in the actual session if it's a one-shot, and you'll get to the action a lot faster. When it comes to the game Vassen, I also recommend asking the party to briefly explain how they have already tackled one or two mysteries. If they've already tracked down a Vassen or two in their backgrounds, throw them 10 or 15 XP so they can buy a few skill points or talents. This is a huge way to start a first session because it doesn't really throw the balance of the game off by much, but it does deepen player buy-in and confidence in facing whatever's about to happen in their upcoming mystery. 
You probably don't want to give them off-screen XP like this after the first session though. It's just a way to kickstart the momentum at the start of a one-shot or possible campaign. Vassen and most Year Zero engine games are fairly simplistic in terms of the dice, and because of that, I prefer to steer away from VTT character sheets when playing online and just use a manual roller. Everyone has their own preferences, but for character sheets, I prefer to just have the players manage them either on paper or on a form fillable PDF of their own. The things that I do want shared by everyone are the maps, character portraits, and tokens. For displaying shared images in a quick and easy way, the virtual tabletop that I found works best so far is Albear Rodeo. There are some little quirks that I got hung up on at first, but once I got past those, it's pretty much become my favorite VTT. As for images, the Vassen book provides all the NPC portraits and maps that you'll need. Personally, I use Midjourney to create a whole aesthetically cohesive set of images that you've already seen in this video so far and used a digital editor to add card borders so that when I present each image, they take on the appearance of a fancy card on the table. Say what you want about AI art, but it has greatly enhanced my RPG playing experience by allowing for these artistically unified presentations that were almost impossible before. Okay, so I lined up the published mystery. I got everyone's dark secrets and their super dark secrets. We worked up some previous Vassen hunting experience. I made all the assets in Minjourney. How did the session actually go? The two PCs show up on this island where they're investigating the disappearance of the vicar. The whole mystery structure here is just three main locations, a fish saltery, an inn, and the Admonson residence, each containing maybe a half a dozen clues that point towards this ultimate truth. But I had a new NPC show up, claiming he was working under the authority of the Archbishop, and imploring the clergyman PC to ferret out and punish anyone who has fornicated with Avassan. This was my attempt to add more weight and danger to the other PC's super dark secret, which was that he had been intimate with the Vassen. This little ruse worked pretty spectacularly, since it caused the second player to nervously guard his secret. It also got the first PC's head on a swivel stick, wondering who was a Vassen and who was sleeping with them. It should be noted that the main mystery component of the session, the stuff that out of the book that the players are supposed to investigate, was pretty obvious to the players. What intrigued the players most was the suspicions born of these dark secrets. I stirred the pot further by having the second PC receive a love letter out of the blue from his Vassen lover and admirer. This immediately put him in the tough spot of trying to hide something from the only other member of his party. And then later, when he decided he was going to confess his congress with a Vassen, he was in mid-sentence when I fired a huge action scene at them, pushing forward the main mystery and prolonging the personal drama. Just as a confession, I was not able to generate the same amount of intrigue and shock about the clergyman's PC's super dark secret of being an illegitimate son of the archbishop. However, the archbishop's agent, which is a concept that I was using to levy that dark secret, just caused all kinds of troubling suspicion for the second player, and that was pretty nice. In the end, the PCs split up and the clergyman almost died facing off with the entire Admonson clan plus the mermaid and a kraken. Somehow the PCs both survived and they made it back to their castle where they confessed their secrets and their bonds grew stronger. I think the super dark secrets worked as intended, but the underlying main mystery was really set on some pretty rigid rails. I had to do a couple of awkward things here and there to make sure that the PCs got to the final confrontation in an acceptable period of time. In other words, to keep the session from dragging on for hours and hours, some unnatural narrative nudges needed to be made. This is mostly due to how these Vassen mysteries are structured. There are set locations and prescribed lists of clues that can be unlocked by certain NPCs or certain places with specific skill checks. But to give players that feeling that they're actually in charge of their characters and their story, I think I would create more of a sandbox where clues could be found in any given location. The term might be floating clues. That way PCs will make progress regardless of where they go in the sandbox as long as they're putting some effort into the investigation. One interesting note is if I had run this mystery without the added layer of super dark personal secret intrigue, the players would have bowled right through the mystery. It's kind of crazy, but the host NPC at the beginning of the mystery actually tells the PCs outright the solution to the mystery before they even get to the island. 
So in conclusion, I'd say that if you're playing Vassen or any mystery RPG that doesn't already have player secrets built in, then I highly recommend getting your players to generate dark secrets that they keep from other players. Then prep the mystery to include those secrets rearing their ugly heads at the worst possible times. You don't want to plan too much when it comes to the secrets though. You want those secrets to create situations that the players have to sort through themselves. Don't plan the player reactions. That's their fun. Your fun as the GM is to set the stage and see how players wiggle and squirm under your dramatic stimuli. I'd love to hear your experience with both Vassen and with player secrets in general. And if you have any tips on either, please leave them in the comments. And if you'd like to keep this channel alive, please consider joining my Patreon. Links are below. Thanks for watching. See ya.